Hi, I'm Sharon and my channel is Budget Crafty Mama. Um, today I'm going to be um, making um, a new apron um, for myself in the kitchen out of the red fabric. This is the apron. I've put extra long ties on it because I like to tie my aprons around the front and most shop bought ones only have quite short aprons that you have to tie at the back. Um, so if you want to have a look to see how I've made this um, I've trimmed it with bias binding and it's got the D-clip fastenings on it around the neck so you can adjust the neck um, so if you want to learn how to make an apron very quickly and easily it took me about 30 minutes to make this uh, then stay tuned right to make this apron you're going to need a few things um, I usually use some, this is just parcel paper that I've picked up from Home Bargains to trace around my apron um, to make a pattern. Um, so I've got that. I've got an apron that I've already been using that is, you know, perfectly good size. I just wanted to extend a little bit to the length because I find them a little bit short. And I also wanted longer ties because I like to tie my... Um, aprons at the front and the ones you buy from the shop then their straps are never long enough for you to tie them from the front so you'll need that to trace your pattern I've already traced my pattern um, I've already traced around it and made my pattern um, and I've added to the length um, on it and I've also added about three quarters of an inch on the side to for my seam allowances so that's my pattern ready to go. You will also need some pins and a pin cushion, a pair of good sharp scissors for cutting your fabric. I'm going to be using bias binding on mine to trim around the neck. I like these clips as well. They are fantastic for attaching things like bias binding when you don't want it to be sort of folding and creasing over. Um, I've got this woven tape. This is what I'm going to be using for my waistband and for my neck. And then I'm going to be fastening mine with these little, um, I don't know if you can see them, these little D clips. Um, they're just like little D rings. And I'm just going to be using two of those to thread my tape through to hold it. Um, I'm also going to be using an ironing board, um, an iron and a sewing machine. I'm going to be using a serger but you don't need a serger, it's just I like to serge around the edge of my work to make sure it's not going to fray. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin my pattern. I folded my apron in half um, and just down the, the middle and I've just done a half so I've folded my, folded my fabric my tongue's not quite with it i folded my fabric in half and I'm just putting that down the fold so that I'm just having to cut it once so I'm just going to pin this on all the way around and then I'm going to cut it out so I just put a few pins in don't need a great deal in this, it's not like it's a complicated pattern. You just need to make sure that you've got it nice and straight. I'm just going to pop a few pins in all the way around. So I'm just going to cut round it now. And you don't have to be too finickety about this. I'm trimming it up straight when I'd use the overlocker on it to seal the seams. I'm just going to trim around here. And then 
And because my overlocker cuts as it sews, I can trim up any like little rough edges that I've done there from not cutting it out perfectly. Um, but this is a project that should really only take you sort of half an hour to an hour, really. Um, so now that's done. Take all the pins out. I'm going to off. I'm going to fold that up because I will probably use it again. I'll just pop it over there. Right. So there's my apron cut out, it's all in one piece, it's a very simple project. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and I am just going to serge all the way around the edge on this um, so that it, it's not going to be fraying on me and then I'll come back when I've done that. Right, so I've serged around the edge um, as you can see so that's made it nice and tidy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my little ironing board out and I'm just going to fold this over a quarter of an inch and iron it and then fold it over another quarter of an inch and iron it. Um, and that will be my seam allowance for the side. So I've got a little diddy ironing board here. <coughs> Plug my iron in. Literally just going to fold that over and just iron and just eyeballing this and not measuring it. Uh, just fold that over and then fold that over. Just going to do it again just so it encloses that surging that I know it's not going to fray underneath there. Right. Over here, the way. Right, now I've cut my ties. As you can see, that's been folded over twice now. And ironed. Now what I've done is I've cut my ties and now I like my ties nice and long because I like to be able to tie my aprons at the front. So at the top here, the top of the side, I'm just going to tuck this apron under. I'm just going to open this up once and I'm just going to tuck that under there and then I'm going to fold that back over the top of it. And then I'm going to bring that back over so that when I'm stitching it, I'm stitching through two layers of it so it'll secure it really well. I don't know if you can see what I did there. So I lay it out flat. I open that up one, one piece. Lay that down. Yeah. Pop that in. Lay that down. Folded this back over it. And then I'm going to, just going to fold that over the top of that. So I'm sewing through it twice. And then I'm just going to put a couple of pins on it. Well, these little clips just to hold it in place until I can sew it. Um, so I'm just going to do that with the other side. Um, and then I'm just going to sew all the way down the edge. Right the way down the edge. Just to secure that and make it nice and neat. And when I've done that I'll come back. Right, so I've done that now, as you can see, my straps are nice and secure, they're not going anywhere, they're completely encased in there so they look nice and tidy, I've done it on both sides, um, you can see, it's nice and secure. So now I'm just going to do the hem 
on this apron and I'm going to fold this over by about an inch and I'm just going to iron all the way along there so I'm just going to get my iron again it's not quite an inch, it's probably about three quarters of an inch just under I'm just going to do it the same all the way along And I'm just going to do it again, but this time I'm going to fold this bit in. I don't know if you can see. Let me try and zoom in on it. I'm going to fold this bit in on itself like that. See how I'm doing that? Just folded the corner in. And then I'm going to fold it up. Probably folded it in a little bit too much there. I only need it a little bit. I just need it so that it's not sticking out of the side here. That'll be fine. So, and then I'm just going to iron all the way along again. Now I could um, change the foot on my sewing machine and do a blind hem on this but it's just an apron for in the kitchen so I'm not going to be too fussy about it. Um, you know if I was doing a skirt or something then I would do a blind hem but I don't see the point with this. So I just doesn't want to stay down. So I'll put a pin in it. Right, so now I fold that over. I'm just going to get a couple of those little clips to put on those corners. You don't want to stay flat. And it might just zoom out a little bit. Let's see what I'm doing. And I'll just pop a couple of these little pins in the length and I'm just going to put one in that corner I folded over just to hold it in place. Alright so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm just going to whiz all the way along this line just to secure the hem and then that's the hem done and then when I've done that I'll be back. Right so now I've done that I've sewn all the way along there it's completely filled in those sides, sewn in those sides. Now we've just got to do around the top. Now you could double fold that again, but it's quite awkward to do and I find it a bit fiddly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use bias binding um, to put like a trim around it, all the way around. So I'm going to start by folding the bias binding in half and I'm going to fold it so that I don't know if you can see that, so that one bit is sort of slightly overlapping the other so that you've got, when you sew on the one side you definitely catch in the other side because it's slightly bigger. So I'm just going to take all this off the roll, so I'm just going to fold it all over and iron it so that it's ready to go on. I'm just going to fold it in half all the way along 
I'm just going to iron the whole strip because I only ever really use bias binding for this sort of stuff. So. A wee bit fiddly but not difficult. You just want to make sure that you've just got that little bit sticking out at the back so that you know when you stitch at the front right on the edge you're definitely catching the back. There we go, that's the last of it. I'm just going to put the iron out of the way. I'm just going to move the ironing board out of the way as well. I don't need that again. Right, now what I'm going to do with this is, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, I'm just going to take the end of this and I'm just going to open it, I'm just going to fold it over a little bit just to give it a nice neat edge on the apron and I'm just going to put that right on the edge of the apron there. just going to use these clips to pin it and then I'm just going to work my way all the way around the curve just putting these little clips on and it's just enclosing that stitching I did to stay in frame on the camera but it's a bit hard. As you can see I'm just literally sandwiching sandwiching the fabric between the bias binding and then just putting a clip on. Right now with here I'm just going to fold it over. I'm just going to fold that down on itself so it gives it a nice corner and then I'm just going to work my way along. And you can see I've come to the end again, so I'm just going to put a clip there for a minute. And then I'm just going to cut it just a little bit longer than I need it. And then I'm going to fold that over like I did on the last one. Put it right to the end. So that's the bias binding in place. There's plenty there to do an apron for Tamsin as well. So I'm going to go around in a minute and I'm going to sew on there. But first I've got to put the straps for the neck that are going to go on. Now the one side is going to be very easy because it is literally...
just a little tab like that with the two D rings in um, on this side. So I literally just cut a little tab like that. And then I would just thread the D rings through it. And then this, like I did with the waistbands, I'm just going to tuck it underneath the bias binding. And bring it back up. I'm just going to put... a couple of clips in there to hold that in place. So it's just like that. Um, bring it in closer so you can see. So you've just got that with the two two little D rings on, and it's just about sticking out about an inch, and it's tucked in behind the bias binding. Now the next bit, I'm literally just going to put it. And my neck and mouth are roughly how long I think I'll need it. And then add a couple of inches just to be sure. And then cut that off. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to pop it underneath the bias binding. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. So I've got the bias binding there. I'm just literally sliding that underneath the bias binding near to the edge. And then I'm just going to fold it back on itself, making sure I've kept it nice and straight underneath there. It's a bit hard. Put an extra clip in there. And then that's that clip. So now all I've got to do now to finish this off is to just go and sew all the way around the edge of this bias binding. Um, and that will be my apron finished. So I'll come back and show you the finished product. Right, so this is the finished apron. As you can see, it's quite a good size. I've been able to make it to fit my size. Um, it's got an adjustable thing on the neck. And then I like to tie mine by putting it around the waist. Which is why I do an extra long waistband, whereas the shop bought ones that you get are not, they don't come with that. And then there you go, so that's the finished product. So I've done mine quite long as well, so if you because normally they sort of come to about that length, so I've just added a bit of length to it. So that's the finished apron. So Nice and cosy because it's 100% cotton. Um, this is quite a thick cotton, so it should wash quite well. Um, if you wanted to, you could add a pocket to the front. I've never used a pocket on any of my aprons, so I didn't see the point in fiddling with it. But that's quite easy to do. You just sort of cut a rectangle out um, and hem round it and sew it on. So that's the finished product. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did. Please hit the like button, subscribe and share the post with your friends. Okay, thank you for watching.